Welcome back everybody. This one is a continuation of my magic card art challenge, so I'm going to slowly get around to all of them. Now I'd like to apologize for the low quality video here. It's just a cropped version of the previous video, so there's a bit of continuity. Um, it's going to get higher res in about a minute, so just put up with it for now. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the things that I'm doing in the image right now. So I'm trying to come up with a really striking composition, something simple and eye-catching. I want to try and find a basic color palette, although colors can always change. Um, but getting color relationships is really important, so finding nice harmonious colors is key. Um, and, and usually if you do find a couple nice harmonious colors, you can really totally flip the script later on and totally change the colors, but because the relationships are correct, you're usually going to have a pretty good harmony wherever you take the colors. So getting a good foundation is very important. So that's all I'm trying to do with this thumbnail, and I really, really encourage everyone to do these little thumbnail sketches before getting too committed to a bigger piece, because look, look how much of the image is already solved with this basic little drawing. There's no detail, it's not important, but if you to take what I have now and make it really small or blur your eyes and you put it side by side with the finished piece, they look pretty similar. I mean I make some small design changes and decisions and I tweak the colors quite a bit in the final, but really the shapes, the composition is all pretty much locked in at this stage and all that's left is to realize the image to its full potential and, and that just means going in and, and really thinking about how the light is going to hit these forms and trying to preserve what I already have in this thumbnail because I like the thumbnail. There's nothing wrong with the image at that size, it, it looks good, but maintaining the character of the original thumbnail becomes the name of the game. <laughs> you're fighting yourself and it can become a really strange experience where you're adding all this detail and realizing these little moments within the image, but then you look at the image as a whole and realize that you've lost something essential about the original uh, concept. And so you go in and you just wipe out all that work that you've done and you're constantly reworking, 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 trying to find this balance, which is really, at its heart, it's a completely subjective and abstract idea of like how should this feel to look at? Um, where should the shapes sit? Um, what's the ideal that I'm trying to find here? And it's all down to your personal taste. But it is so easy to suck out all of the life because as you go in closer and closer and you add these areas where light and dark are next to one another, because that's basically detail, is turning forms, finding moments of interest. But if you go too far and put too many moments of interest in one area, you could end up with a very confusing kind of uniform feel. Because people have a tendency, myself included, to not really understand the random nature of nature, right? Nature is just a bunch of coincidences that have occurred and it results in stunning beauty and amazing composition because the elements are so random. But the human mind is more organized than that. And if you were to ask a bunch of people to draw a hundred dots at random on a white piece of paper, I guarantee you the vast majority of people are going to spread those dots pretty evenly around the page. They might do a whole bunch of dots, you know, all over the place and then see an emptier space and go over there and put a dot there. Oh, there's a big empty space over here, put a dot there. I know that that's probably what I would tend to do. <laughs> In fact, I know it for certain because I did a series of oil paintings a while ago, maybe like a year ago, of these celestial cats in space and I had to draw all of the little stars everywhere and stars are a perfect example of this, random dots. And as you're putting them in, you see a big empty space and you just want to put one in there. But if it's random, they're going to clump up at times and there's going to be empty spaces. It's a random assortment of dots. Um, and if you go in and start putting detail in, you'll see empty areas that don't have detail and you'll want to add something in there just so bad because it, you've done this beautiful 
nice detailed area and it just looks great over here. Oh, I should add some of that over there, you know? I do the same with colors as well. Like put a bit of red over here and then suddenly this doesn't have any red over here. Ooh, I'll put a little bit there and a little bit there. And after a while of doing this, if you don't check yourself, you end up with a really even image where all of the detail is spread evenly throughout and the colors have evened out. But there's no visual interest in that. We don't want to see this even image. We want to feel things playing off one another. We want to see areas of interest. We want to see breaks. We want our eyes to have rest. And finding that balance is just so difficult. It's so subjective. And it's one of the hardest things about painting a landscape. It's the majority of the work. And I love it. But you see, when you're adding all of this detail, and then wiping it away, and then adding it, and wiping it away. I have a recommendation for you. Consider changing your brush regularly. If you're working digitally and you have all of these different textures, just change it regularly. And when you do wipe away information, when you get too busy and you go knock it all back, don't knock back all of the detail. Leave little bits here and there around the edges. Because if you do that, and you're adding in these different interesting textures and then wiping it 90% away, leaving little bits around the edges and then adding more detail and then wiping it back. You end up with a really rich, deep textured feel. And it's something that I've been doing more recently, trying to leave my mistakes underneath the surface. Because when I left digital art for a while and went on a bit of a crazy oil painting bender for like a year, <laughs> painting cats in space. Um, I found that the more you build up these layers of detail on top of one another, leaving all of the characteristics in there, because the paint is 3D, you make a brush stroke and if it's thick, it's got texture and when you go in to add paint on top, it applies interestingly to this non-uniform surface. And you can kind of get a similar effect even working digitally where you build up the character of an image with layer upon layer of detail. And I say this because when I first started out working digitally, I found that I had all of this freedom to just constantly rework things and take it back to zero, right? And you could really, really just spend a long time smoothing out everything and making it look really smooth and plastic or something like there's this specific look to work that has been done with the soft round brush kind of smoothing out everything to make it perfect and don't be afraid to leave character and interest in your brush strokes don't be afraid to leave mistakes in there a lot of the things that make an image interesting are these imperfections these moments of interest that come from some abstract kind of random occurrence and if you sort of try too hard to get in and be in control of every little piece of your image, you just end up losing the life and the, the energy of the thing. But I'm not trying to say leave things rough, do a shit job. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. And I'm not trying to say that people who do really high detail work are doing a bad job. It's just uh, when I do really high detail work, I do a bad job. <laughs> so I'm just saying, Take a look at your image when you're done doing a bunch of detail and be critical of the detail. If it's not feeling right, if it just seems less interesting to you than what the thumbnail had promised, consider wiping away a bunch of detail and getting stuck back into it and thinking about the larger building blocks again. And I want to make something perfectly clear. You can continue doing this process of knocking back the detail and coming back in and adding detail and knocking back the detail and coming back. And if you can maintain control of the idea that you had of the image, if you can maintain the feeling that you wanted from the start while adding more and more detail, you can get really hyper detailed and end up with something that's super, super tight. And that's fine as long as you haven't lost that spark. So, what do you think of the image? It's coming to a close, just doing some little last minute tweaks here and there. But um, yeah, did I choke the life out of it as I detailed it up? Did you prefer the thumbnail or do you like it how it is now? I think it's kind of interesting. I like it. Can't wait to get this printed on cards. 
should look something like this. What do you think? Hopefully Wizards doesn't sue me for using their card template. <coughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, hit that like button, comment down below, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Why haven't you subscribed? Come on, I've got new videos coming out almost every week. Well, every week. I just missed one, okay? And I'm sorry, it just took a lot longer to make, okay? But every week, more videos. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you there. Thank you.